What's going on, guys? It's your average consumer, and today, where are we going, Austin? No, we're not going to a trampoline park. What is it? We're going to school. Oh. Yeah. But today we're going to be spending a real day in the life with the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'm going to drop this guy off to school and we're going to spend a full day with the phone and test out everything you need to know about it. Now you guys know the deal. We're spending a full day with the 15 Pro Max. And we're going to look to see if that new body actually feels different, if the cameras are better, how it performs, and of course, we want to see how that battery holds up. So let's jump in. All right, guys. So I just dropped off Austin. We're on our way to the studio. If I didn't mention it before, everything we're shooting with right now is coming directly from the front facing camera of the 15 Pro Max and the audio is the same as well. But yeah, we're going to go to the studio. I got a lot of stuff to get done. You guys know we've been trying to get this studio together for ages. Um, so we've got, you know, some tech to add to it. We're working on the streamer room. My office is finally done. I'll give you guys a sneak peek into that. Today we're working on the streaming room. So let's go check that out. All right, y'all. So I just made it into the studio. Check it out. This is my office, huh? huh? You like? Full video on the office coming soon. Lots of cool stuff in here. Uh, it's not done, but that's besides the point. We got the 15 Pro Max over here. Uh, <laughs> As you can see, your boy is rocking it with no case. Scary times. But you know how we do with the real day in the life. I gotta really get to know the phone, see how it feels just normally. Now, mama ain't raising no fool. I did throw a screen protector on here. At least I got that covered. Uh, but you know, this phone is actually really comfortable to hold in the hand. It has gotten lighter. Um, so it feels really comfortable. I'm not too worried about dropping it. Listen, I'm scared of like, it's brushed titanium though. So I'm afraid of like dropping it and getting any scuff marks on it because I feel like it'll really show. So I think you, like, if you try <laughs> it, you insane. <laughs> Those days of YouTube are over. <laughs> Without a case, I gotta say, it definitely feels different in the hand. It's lighter and those rounded edges really do make a difference when holding it. My wife, Ari, got a chance to hold it and immediately could tell the difference in weight, but she actually liked the heft of the previous models. But I think anybody who's had an iPhone 14 Pro slip out of their hand and land on their face while in bed, will appreciate the lighter body. So it's definitely more comfortable to hold over time, but I think our pinkies are the real winners here since they won't have to be the footrest to slightly sharper edges from the previous generations. Now, one of the benefits of not rocking a case is actually getting to enjoy the phone and the way it feels in the hand and just the look of it. Now, speaking of the looks, this is in the natural titanium color. There are four colors, this guy, there's also black, blue, and white. And you might be wondering, I know a lot of people have been asking what exactly is the natural titanium? What does it look like? Think gray. This back feels pretty gray. Um, I will say though, it's more on the warmer side. I can even imagine someone saying it's got like a champagne look to it. My shirt is definitely gray. Then that's a very different gray. <laughs> this is very different. It's warmer, right? Yes. Yeah, so there you have it. Now the phone also has a smaller frame, so it's a little thinner slightly shorter. Now, while it might not be very noticeable around the frame to see how much thinner it is, the bezels, you guys, check this out. This is my previous iPhone and look at this guy. Yeah, it's a very noticeable difference. I gotta say, if this feels so sleek in the hand that I'm considering not rocking a case anymore. I've come to the to no, the no, you know what, JD? Now I'm not going to join the group just because you said that I, I can't be in there with you. You be dropping your phone, man. But I did mention earlier that we want to jump into the streaming room and get some work done in here because it's uh, but yeah, you guys, this is, <laughs> this is our streaming room. We got a lot of work to do in here. Might as well start. The idea here is to try and make some progress on the streaming room, clean here up, start putting things in their spots, start building out the RGB stuff. And we do have this TV over here and we need something for consoles to live on. Like this is supposed to be like a serious, you know, kind of game room. So we might need to hit up Ikea. I'm gonna go look on Ikea's website and see if there's any options. Uh, color, black. Oh, 33 options. 
That's a top seller? Why? No offense to anyone who's bought it. Let's just go. Let's just go to Ikea and maybe if we see something in person, it'll strike us a bit more. You wanna take a couple pictures of the... Yeah, sure. Let's do a wide angle shot here. Oh, check this out. Apple put a special coating on the lenses so we don't get like those crazy lens flare effects that you used to get with the iPhones when you pointed at a source of light. I'm actually gonna show you guys what it looks like on the 14 Pro first and then show you what it looks like here. So when you point it at a source of light, you see those beams coming out from the sides of each of the lights? Mm -hmm. You see those, right? Yeah. Now with this guy. Oh, oh. You see the difference? Big difference. Uh, and Ari's calling me. She ain't want nothing. You know, something that's kind of thrown me, and it's, I think it's an iOS 17 thing, is the new interface for calling someone. That's weird, it's all at the bottom, which is more accessible now. It's easy to just tap it. They also switched the buttons around, so mute is on this side. FaceTime is now on top of the end button. It's crazy, but it makes one-handed use nice and easy. So, <laughs> like I was saying, yeah. But you really do see a pretty substantial difference now. We got a cool Nano leaf set up over here. Dang, the black ones look so good. That looks really good. That's with the main lens? This is with the main lens, so. 24? 24. 24, yep. So you know, we got the different lenses here. Look at that, look at, look at that. Five times? Five times. <laughs> All right, you guys, so we are on our way to Ikea. We've got the GPS going right now. You know, just trying to simulate the real world usage. Want to see what, what, 27 or eight minutes would look like, you know, just using the phone and how that's gonna impact the battery. So we gotta get this TV stand really quick and head on back. Cause I got a meeting at four and I'm cutting it close. Now I know you noticed the car mount I was using and if you didn't, check it out. This is the ESR MagSafe 15 watt car charger. And ESR was cool enough to sponsor today's video and send us some really nice accessories for the new iPhones. I definitely think my favorite one is the 25 watt three in one MagSafe charger since it offers the fastest MagSafe charging speeds at the full Apple certified 15 watts. And it can also charge your Apple watch and AirPods all at the same time. But what's really sick about this charger though is that it has this cryo boost feature that provides cooling to your phone while it's on the charger. And because wireless charging causes phone to run hot, with other chargers, it'll decrease the charging speed. But with Cryo Boost, you don't have to worry about that. You get the full charging speed the whole time. The car charger also has this feature, which is actually really nice to have because wireless charging and your phone sitting in the sun can lead to a really hot phone. They've also got this cool MagSafe travel charger if you wanna charge your three devices on the go. Not to mention a case with a built-in kickstand you get the drift. They're dope and they offer a lot. And if you guys want to check them out, I'll of course have everything linked down below in the description. Now, something that I'm really liking about these new iPhones is that 2000 nit peak brightness when you're outdoors, because my goodness, you guys, like on a sunny day like this, I can see my screen clear as day. Dom, show them, man. This screen is so bright. I don't even know if it's going to be overexposed on your end. I can uh, see it. It looks so good. So. If you're somebody who hikes, who goes outdoors, who spends a lot of time outside, you should be all right. All right, you guys, so we made it to Ikea. Now we really quickly need to find a TV stand. So I can't be late, but there are all these photo ops, flowers. I haven't taken a picture of fl a flower for a camera test in like years. Let's get one of those in there. You know, sometimes you just gotta see it in person. Cause seeing it online, you know, you just assume it's not gonna be good enough. But then you see it in person, and they're like, that's yeah, fine. It'll work. So one thing I've noticed is I wanted to like bring out the flashlight. I find it to be faster to just hit the bottom of the phone screen, like on the lock screen. That's easier than maneuvering up to the top for the action button. So while it's nice to have the action button, the placement makes it a little hard to easily get to it. 
when you quickly want to turn it on. Okay, so we had to rush out of Ikea. They saw us with the camera and they started complaining, whatever. Anyway, I want to keep talking about this action button. So this is probably the feature I was the most excited about. It's amazing because you can add so many different functionalities to it. You can go into your settings, scroll right down to action button. You've got all of these here. Now, I do have like what I said in Ikea, one little issue with it is just, it's not really easy to reach. You know what? That's, that's what I was thinking too. Let's set the action button here to flashlight. But like, I'm in the dark, I wanna use my flashlight. Oh, that. <laughs> now, I'm a righty, so what's realistic? I'm, oh, I'm gonna flash. No, the Pro is so much easier. But that is something worth considering if you want the action button to be like a big deal for you. But some people might not even want to use it for the camera. They might set it to like a shortcut where that's not a button you're going to be pressing frequently. Maybe you just want to press it as you drive up to your home. Reaching all the way over here is not going to be an issue. It's going to be an issue more so for those like really quick actions, things you want to just really hop into really fast. It honestly all depends on what you're trying to do with it. But for the Pro Max, if you want to get into that action really quickly, it might be a little bit tougher if you're not left-handed. Oh, I gotta make a decision. And that action button is one of the biggest changes of the new iPhone, but it doesn't really fall behind the addition of USB-C. Now, this is something everyone has wanted for a long time now, and it's finally here. But what does that mean for like all of us, right? Well, I'll let you know right off the bat, that charging speeds are gonna be staying the same as previous iPhones. And while charging hasn't changed aside from the kind of cable that we're using now, the USB-C port does add some other functionality like the ability to use USB-C accessories. And one of the most common things you'll see is probably accessing files from external storage or even recording ProRes video to that external storage. There's gonna be a lot of fun and interesting accessories that we're gonna be able to connect our phones to now. I'm pretty excited to see what kind of accessories the iPhone's gonna be able to get now that it's on USB-C. Now, another benefit of using USB-C on the iPhone is being able to charge other devices. If they support power delivery, the iPhone will charge up to 4.5 watts, which isn't fast or anything, but can be useful in a pinch if your phone dies or you need to charge your AirPods or something. All in all though, the addition of USB-C is definitely a win for iPhone users moving forward. Now we did talk about a lot of cool accessories from our sponsor today, but I'm gonna be doing like a full blown video on like other things that we didn't cover in today's video, like cables and that kind of stuff. So we've got like a whole pile kind of happening over there, but more on that later. Uh, you know, I am curious though, like you think we could plug an XDR display to this thing straight up right from the Thunderbolt cable? You know, it's USB, USB-C, USB 3. We're adding some, oh, dang, it's right there. That's easy. Can I play my Sonic on the big screen? <laughs> oh, I'm about to game in the most ridiculous way right now without looking at my phone. That's actually really tough. Oh, oh, oh no. But that was smooth though. It is a really fast paced game, but I mean, even just putting it on the bigger screen, it handled that really well. That's amazing. We gotta try Resident Evil on here. So Resident Evil Village, crazy title, actually running on the iPhone. That's straight up a controller. Yeah, you could think of it like that, right? Hold on, I'm just gonna turn it. Does this have a prox, like a accelerometer? Oh, snap. Oh, okay. 14 gigs? All right, we do not have the time. I gotta go home, Ari's gonna kill me. Dang, that, that already gave it back a 5% battery. Just having it charged on there for that little bit, charged it up a little bit. Either way, we're currently at 39%. We were at 34 before, uh, but we are at 39%. It is six o'clock and we are at three hours and 57 minutes of screen on time. That's not too bad. I didn't game much today or take many pictures. We'll see how it handles it once I get home because you already know, I gotta take a lot of pictures of my boys. Now, since we hit on gaming, let's talk about performance. You guys saw it here, but with my typical games, the A17 Pro that's only inside the Pro models 
provides really smooth gameplay and performance. Now we did throw some crazier titles at the phone like Resident Evil Village and this is where things start to get interesting because we've never seen games that exist on video game consoles actually come to the iPhone and be completely playable. But Apple says with this new chip, we're going to be able to see AAA titles, which are like the biggest and greatest, become playable on these phones. Resident Evil ran just fine for me, and I don't think any of us saw this coming. Assassin's Creed is also supposed to be coming to the iPhone, which is just mind boggling because these games are going to be the ones we see on the consoles and not just some kind of port for the iPhone. So from a gaming perspective, this is pretty next level and I'm curious what other titles we're going to be seeing come to these phones. I think for the average use cases, the iPhones have been powerful enough to handle those kind of tasks very smoothly and even like ProRes video editing, you kind of get the drift. And thankfully, I made it home in time to do the bedtime routine with my boys. And of course, I had to capture them while they were acting nuts. That's just kind of how it goes over here. But we do have to talk about that camera performance. And we didn't see too much change in terms of the camera hardware here, outside of the 15 Pro Max getting that new 5x telephoto lens. But overall, camera performance is as good as last year. You can consistently get reliable photos with great color accuracy, especially for skin tones. Having darker skin, I'm always conscious about how photos handle me and my family's skin tones in different lighting situations. And I gotta say, I always feel pretty confident that with the iPhone, we're going to get pictures that accurately represent us. Now with all of that aside, some of the newer stuff we're seeing with the Pro models comes in the form of software. We've heard Apple say it's like having seven lenses in one phone, and they definitely give you access to all of them right at the bottom of the frame. And this is something I think photographers will appreciate the most. Serious camera users will all have their favorite focal lengths, whether that's 24 millimeters, 28 millimeters, or 35 millimeters. You get access to them all here when you tap that one times button. What's also nice here is that you get to zoom without it being digital and losing any quality. And we still have the two times zoom that runs off the main lens if you want a tighter shot but the telephoto lens is supposed to be the option you want when you want something that's a bit far away. And the images that come out of it look pretty good, but I did notice in some low light environments, it seems to like to default to the main lens with a digital zoom. And while the main lens may be the stronger lens, the five times looks a bit better in some situations, so I wish we had a way to lock it in, but as of right now, the camera pretty much picks for you. My favorite change though has to be being able to take portrait photos and live photos at the same time. I've struggled with having to choose between a live photo and a portrait mode photo because while I think portrait mode shots look amazing, the ability of the live photo and potentially change the frame of the photo to one that you think looks better is invaluable to me. I also kind of like the fact that you can pick the subject you want in focus with this mode, as well as how much blur you want to add. But I will say, if you end up picking a different frame from the live photo, you will lose the depth effect. And video is still amazing on the iPhone. I personally think the iPhone is king in this category, and I know I'm not alone, but it does have a couple of new features, like being able to shoot in ProRes log, this is absolutely a feature that videographers will enjoy if they ever need to pair their iPhones with their shooting camera and they wanna match the color so the videos look similar. Either way, cameras haven't changed too much, but they're still great and now they offer some specific features that I think are gonna be really beneficial to quite a few people. And the phone finally hit that 1% mark at 10.45 p.m. We ended the day with about six hours and 42 minutes of screen on time, which is very, very solid. I'm pretty happy with the battery life that we're getting here. And there are some other really cool features like the ultra wideband chip that are in the new models, allowing you to find a friend if they wanna share their location with you. And there are also some really cool iOS 17 updates that makes the phone just pretty fun to use. All in all though, this is a great phone. Do I see the need to upgrade if you have like a 14 Pro? Not really, but Apple is doing some pretty noteworthy stuff with trade-ins. So that might be something you wanna explore depending on if you feel the need to upgrade. Me personally though, I love the look and feel of the new phone and I'm honestly pretty happy with it. And hopefully it helps you come to a decision on whether or not you wanna pick it up. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, peace.